Um, my name is Leah. For those of you that don't know, I am the chapter leader for the Los Angeles chapter of the Nomadic Network, and I help Erica host some of these events. She is on her honeymoon right now, so you get me tonight. I am the co-creator and co-host of a travel podcast called Ticket to Anywhere podcast. It is a YouTube podcast, and you can listen to it anywhere you listen to your podcast. So I'm super excited to be here with Emma, aka Wanderlust and Wet Wife. She's going to let us know a little bit about Singapore. Everyone keep utilizing that chat. And before we get to Emma's presentation, I am just going to go through a few housekeeping rules. Um, oh, actually, Emma, do you mind stopping your yep. screen share? That's fine. Oh, how do I do that? Um, there should be a button that says, there you go. Oh, now I can see everyone's beautiful face. I love that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to share mine now. All right, everyone, you're at a Nomadic Network event. Again, my name is Leah, and I am here with Emma. We are a global travel community that started in 22 cities around the world pre-COVID, you know, we were started by Nomadic Matt. He wanted to spread his mission of helping people travel for longer, travel better, travel cheaper, um, and just become an all-around amazing traveler. So these were all live community events, and then COVID hit. So like everyone else, we turned to virtual events, but that does not mean we are slacking or limiting the amount of events. In fact, you can attend one of our events from wherever you are in the world, whether you're on a beach, on a hammock, or in your whichever hemisphere you're in. Um, and that is the beauty of the virtual events is you can connect with people. I've met, I know I've met some of my best friends through this network. So we're super grateful that we've been able to transition this to online. A few things to keep in mind, you can turn your camera on. Um, I love, like I said, love to see your faces. You will be muted for the duration of the event. Um, drop all of your questions in the chat box because we'll have a Q&A that follows the presentation. And if you can remember, please start your question with like a big question so that I can just grab it and pull it out and uh, we'll, Emma and I will discuss at the end. So like I said, feel free to use the chat to connect. You can supplement Emma's stories with your stories or like if you have any hot tips to throw in or if you've been to Singapore like 70 times or you've moved there and moved away again. Like, I wanna know all that. I've never been to Singapore, which I think is crazy to me. <laughs> so I'm super excited for this one. Replays are available to Patreon members, patreon.com forward slash nomadic mat. I'll explain a little bit on the next slide. And we're here to learn, have fun, you know, travel via presentations and through our friends since we're not doing too much of that right now. And as always, our speakers are doing this out of the kindness of their heart and all the passion they have in sharing just boundless knowledge with you. So for that, we are incredibly grateful, Emma. So really quickly, if you feel that you've um, you know, gotten value from the Nomadic Network, we do have an amazing Patreon community. It's pretty exclusive. It's the Nomadic Map Patreon. You'll see all these bullets list all the cool things that you can get that we don't give to just everyday folks. You know, this community has our event replays. We have live Q and A's. Those are my favorite with Matt because I swear he'll answer every single question. You know, free signed books, guides, never before seen photos, input on what content comes next, um, travel con tickets, like chance to win those, uh, Facebook access, access to our courses, tons of perks. I know if you, me and a few of my friends are part of it and it's so worth it. If you can't do that, we're always open to a one-time donation as well, and that's PayPal. So to check out either of these, you just hold your phone camera up to the screen and scan the QR code that you would like to uh, receive more information on. Super easy. So now that we've gone through all the little housekeeping rules, <laughs> housekeeping um, items, I just want to introduce Emma, and I'll drop her contact info in the Zoom chat as well. So Emma's a British travel enthusiast and she's a longtime expat living in Singapore, her 10th city. I did not know that, that's crazy. With her family of four. She's passionate about sustainable travel. Woohoo, I love that. Responsible tourism, excellent. Family travel and empowering expat women. And is the mastermind behind Wanderlust and Wet Wipes. What a cute name. 
She's highly involved in the events put on by the Nomadic Network, and despite the time differences, makes it to a lot of our travel events. I can vouch for this because I do see Emma a lot, and I always shout out to her. So without further ado, uh, Emma, I'll let you have the floor. You can throw up your presentation. Okay, let's do this. Where am I? Can you guys all see that? Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be on this side of the screen um, and presenting to you all. And I love the Nomadic Network um, events. I've actually, it's one of the few good things that have come out of COVID for me because it did put all of the events back onto uh, online and it meant that I could join a lot of them and being stuck over all the way over here in Singapore, there weren't that many nomadic network events for, for me to join. It. So um, it's been amazing. Um, I make as many as I can. Um, obviously, some of them, the time difference doesn't really work. And I'm not quite that dedicated that I'll get up in the middle of the night. But um, I do watch some of them on replay because I am also a Patreon member. So um, a little bit about me. Um, this is me. This was um, taken in a place called Fort Canning um, a couple of months ago um, here in Singapore. Uh, so I'm Emma, I'm um, an international liver, I suppose. I don't really like the expat word, but um, that's kind of how it is, uh, what people identify with. Um, I identify as a recovering and corporate insurance broker, so I escaped, um, but it was really only because of our constant moving that that, that, that was uh, a thing. Um, I'm now a writer, um, freelance writer and a blogger. I'm a mum of four, um, five of you count my dog, who was actually, he came first, so maybe you do. Um, and actually there's a picture of all of us just there. Um, he, uh, he is the most long suffering dog. We picked him up in Houston uh, in 2009 and he has moved from Houston to London to Doha and now to Singapore and he hates flying. Um, so that's, he's a pretty long suffering dog. Um, I, got into travel writing and blogging when um, I guess a couple of years into parenthood and I was really really struggling with traveling with children it was just so stressful and I never really enjoyed it and we really found it difficult to get a balance between something that worked for the children um, that was still fulfilling for us um, and we did that on a life-changing trip to Bali um, and I haven't really looked back, to be honest. Um, you know, the, the the core of me is the travel addict, which is, um, I know so many of you are also the same. Um, a little bit about where I've lived. Um, I've, this is, as Leah said, my 10th country. I've lived in South America, North America, Europe, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and Australia. Um, I speak Spanish and French and Portuguese very badly, as well as English, and um, I just, I love traveling, um, but I mostly love living in new places and get, really getting to know uh, new communities. So that is me. Um, a little bit about Singapore, if you don't know uh, where we are. We are a sovereign island city-state in, uh, Southeast, in Southeast Asia. We're one degree of latitude north of the equator, that's around 85 miles. Um, and we're just off uh, the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. Uh, the weather is warm and humid, so I spend a lot of time trying to tame the humidity out of my hair. Um, it's around 28 to 32 degrees Celsius um, most days. We get rain most days, uh, but it doesn't usually rain the whole day. It's the whole very tropical, absolutely incessant downpour, and then it stops. Um, the currency is the Singapore dollar. One uh, Singapore dollar is around 75 US cents. Um, fun fact that I found out while I was researching this is that the uh, Singaporean national anthem is inscribed in tiny writing on the back of the thousand um, dollar note, which I didn't know because I have never seen a thousand dollar note. Um, the flag that you can see um, on your screen, uh, the red apparently represents, I'm going to have to read this, it represents universal brotherhood and equality of man. The white symbolizes purity and virtue. The crescent moon uh, represents a young nation on the rise. And then the five stars are the five ideals of democracy, peace, progress, justice, and equality. Um, 
The, there are four national languages, English, Malay, Mandarin, and Tamil. Um, there's also Singlish, which I'll get onto in, in a minute. Um, the culture is an interesting one. It's, a, it's known as a melting pot. Um, there's a huge diversity, I would say here, uh, both in terms of the Singaporean nationals and like, their backgrounds, um, but as well, uh, there's, I think there's around five and a half million people that live on the island and uh, one, uh, over one and a half million of those are non-nationals um, and non-permanent residents. So it's a big expat um, and international community, uh, which brings an amazing um, diversity to the, to the country. It's super cool. They, they give you national holidays for many different um, religious holidays. So, we, you know, we have a national holiday for Christmas, but we also have one for Eid, which is the um, Muslim holiday following Ramadan. Um, in fact, there's two Eids and we celebrate both of those. Um, we celebrate Deepavali um, and we even celebrate um, a festival called Taipusam. We don't get a day off for that, but it's this um, crazy piercing festival, um, which is actually illegal in some countries. So if uh, you're interested in that, go, go look it up. Um, so, uh, some fun facts about Singapore, other than the national anthem one that I just shared. Um, it is a city-state, there's only two other city-states, um, surviving city-states in the world. One is Monaco, the other one's the Vatican City. Um, Singapore has um, several nicknames, one is the Little Red Dot, which is a political um, response to somebody being very derogatory about Singapore and saying that we were just a little red dot in the ocean and not very, not really worth thinking about. Um, Singapore also means the lion city in Sanskrit. Um, and that's, that's also a bit of a misnomer. There's no lions on, in Singapore apart from in captivity. Um, and actually I can't even see, I'm just going to move my screen. Oh, and it's also known as the garden city. Um, it's, it's a super green city. Um, I don't know if it's because I lived in the Middle East for four years before we moved here, but we in the Middle East, we used to joke that it was 50 shades of beige and uh, here it's 50 shades of green. So I, it's, uh, that's an intentional thing. They have a lot of parks um, and a lot of trees. It's, because it's so tropical, it's all very lush and it's really just um, gorgeous. Uh, Singapore is not just one island. Um, the main nation island is uh, known as Singapore, but there are 63 other islands um, surrounding um, that make up the entire nation. Um, most of them are uninhabited, but you can visit them, or you could before COVID, uh, visit them for the day. Um, as I said, we have four languages plus Singlish, which is a kind of combination of English and uh, Singaporean. Um, there's various different things that people say that have actually even made their way into the expat community. So um, they say la at the end of sentences quite a lot, um, which is just hilarious. And I still can't figure out when you're supposed to say it and when you're not, but um, it always entertains me when people say that. Uh, if you are able to do something, then you just say can. If you can't, then you say cannot. Uh, sometimes if you really can do it, then you say can, can. Um, and uh, that's, you know, my WhatsApp is just, you know, Shall we go out for dinner on Friday night? Yep, can, can, can. Um, what else can I tell you? It is um, one of the 20 smallest countries in the world. It's uh, around, the US is around 15,000 times bigger than Singapore. Um, it holds the Bukit Team and Nature, Nature Reserve, which is um, one of the places that I'll show you some pictures of later, has more species of tree than the entire North American continent. Um, and buildings in Singapore can cannot be um, higher than 280 meters. So those were the random facts that I found out while I was looking at stuff. Um, another thing that you may have heard about Singapore is that you cannot buy chewing gum. Um, and you may, not, may or may not know this, I did not know, but if you've been to South Asia, Southeast Asia um, and are familiar with Tiger Balm, it was actually invented by the Hoare Palm brothers in Singapore. So. Why is that not? There we go. Um, so you've got to start with the tourist stuff. Um, I understand that everybody loves going to coming to Singapore and um, and seeing everything. Um, Crazy Rich Asians definitely made the Super Tree Grove in uh, Gardens by the Bay uh, incredibly famous. 
it's um it's an amazing place we go there quite a lot we are members um and it, so it's uh, they have a super tree grove and you can just walk around there for free and they've got a lot of parks and playgrounds and a splash pad for the kids and things and that's all free if you want to go into the domes or up onto the skywalk which you can see in the bottom left photo um it's super cool but you do have to pay um and they usually have offers and deals um gardens by the bay is right down strangely by the bay um, so you get amazing views of the bay and of the skyline. So it's um, it's a really nice place to go. Um, it's also really close to Marina Bay Sands, um, which is this incredible hotel. Um, I've never seen anything quite like it. It seems like it's about on top of three pillars. Um, I've never actually been up to the top, but I have been up to the top of other places, as you can see in the top right, where you get these great views um, of it um, and the in the surrounding area it's um it's a really nice area all the way all all kind of all down there that um you can go the in the bottom in the bottom picture there's a kind of flowering onion that's one of the museums which we'll talk about later the art science museum um there's merlion park down there which is also where that bottom photo was taken um and yeah it's just it's a really nice area lots of bars and restaurants and it's fun to walk around um, this is uh, Tanjong Pagar. It's um, the, sorry, no, it's not Tanjong Pagar at all, it's Kampong Glam, uh, which is the Arab Quarter. It's really famous um, it's super fun to go out at night. Um, it's always really busy. Um, even now in COVID, it's busy. And I took this picture in the middle, due, like kind of right after lockdown um, uh, finished, which was, we call it phase, one, phase two we're in now. Um, and so during the day, it's still quite quiet, but during the evening, it gets um, it gets really busy. They used to play live music, which was amazing. I can't do that anymore. Um, it's really fun to just walk around. They have all these really cute boutique shops. It's all really colourful. There's loads and loads of street art. It's um, They've got amazing um, Arabic shops selling all these kind of don't think I put a picture in here to, for this presentation, but they've got all these amazing, you know, like the Turkish lamps and um, and all the Turkish crockery that so they, they sell all of that stuff. Um, and it's funny because you come from the Middle East and you think that you you can get all the, of that stuff in the Middle East, which you can. And then I kind of I was walking down the street and I was like, wow, this is like this is more Arab than the souk. It was just crazy. So. Um, really, really lovely area. I love going down there and wandering around. Um, again, great restaurants and lovely stuff to eat. Um, so it's a great place to be. Um, there's some other sort of typical stuff that most people do when they come here. Um, they, everybody goes to Universal. Um, everybody looks for the Merlion. Um, people like to go and drink Singapore slings and raffles. Um, I don't know if how many, how many of you have tried a Singapore, Singapore sling? Um, I haven't had any yet today. Um, not actually that nice, in my opinion, but you kind of have to go and try. Um, the bar's really cool because they've tried to recreate it as it would have been. Um, and so you get like, they deliver you a big bag of um, peanuts and you have to, you know, crack them open and, um, and you just drop the, drop this, everything on the floor. Um, so it's, all, it's a nice atmosphere, but it's, um, yeah. I would say if you've had a Singapore thing once, that's probably just enough. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm just trying to remember all, all my, looking at all my notes to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, one thing I haven't got a photo of here, um, and I was really annoyed with myself that I don't have a good photo, is the Hawker Markets, which was also made famous uh, in um, Crazy Rich Asians. The Hawker, there's so many Hawker Markets and it's a really great place. Singapore's pretty expensive, but the Hawker markets are actually a really inexpensive way to eat. Um, and they're just delicious. A lot of the um, individual stalls have got Michelin stars. Um, in fact, yesterday a friend sent me a link to 15 different Hawker stalls that have Michelin stars. So I think she and I are gonna start making our way around there, around those um, and do a little tour. Um, might need to spread it out. That's quite a lot of food. Um, and you can have everything from, um, and we'll get onto the, to the a lot of the foods. But there's you know there's Indian food and there's Chinese food and there's Indonesian food and there's Malaysian and and then things that are very specific to Singapore as well. So it's um, absolutely delicious. 
Um, and then the other big thing that people do, and again, I don't have a photo of it because I don't really think it's an amazing tourist thing, but um, is Orchard Road. It's um, or super famous for doing loads of shopping, which isn't really my thing when I go traveling. Um, I figure I can do that at home, but, um, but yeah, lots of people like to go to Orchard Road as well. It's got some cool buildings um, and it's always, it's always busy and lively. Um, this is much more my favorite thing to do is to find the stuff that's off the beaten track. And one of the things that I was just blown away by when we moved to Singapore was how, um, how much there is to do here. And the, I mean, I started counting about all the different things that I was going to talk about today. And I think I'm up to like 90. Um, and that was just off the top of my head. I didn't even have to do very much research for that. So um, with one of the, my thing, one of the things that I love about the this, about the city is that it's got so many different communities. So there's um, there's a really big Chinatown, which is um, amazing. It's so good. I was just, just there yesterday eating uh, dumplings with some friends. Um, I love walking around there. They've got um, cool shops and stalls, um, places to eat. It's just, it's a really, um, it's a great vibe down there. We really, really like it. Um, and we've also got um, a big Indian population. So there's um, an area called Little India. Um, and it's just fantastic to go and see. Um, both of those areas get really lit up at certain times. So at the moment, Singapore, uh, Chinatown's really lit up because uh, we've just finished the mid-autumn festival, which is enormous here. Um, and then the photo on the left is Little India, um, which I took for when we were there for Deepavali or Diwali. Um, and it was just amazing all these lights and just so many streets just street upon street upon street with all these lights are going over the over the road it was lovely um and little india obviously i mean i'm a great fan i'm, I'm a brit i'm a great fan of a good curry so little india is a great place to go for that um this is my favorite place in the whole of singapore um the botanic gardens i go there probably once a week for a walk um, at least I usually try and meet a friend um, I still get lost there it's enormous um, I haven't pretty sure every single time I go there it's I've, I've just I stumble across a new place so there's always something new to do something new to see um, it's got loads and loads of wildlife so we've got um, I should have put a picture in actually we get these massive monitor lizards there I mean they're absolutely huge um, and I saw one the other day, it was, it was eating an otter, like it was just amazing. And there was this huge crowd of people just taking pictures because we couldn't believe it. Um, and there's loads of otters and loads of birds and it's just the best place to go. Um, I try and go early in the morning, so then that's really fun as well because there's enormous groups like, well, there were before COVID, um, like 50 to 100 people all doing Tai Chi at the same time. And there's, and, various areas and then there's like boot camps and there's people running there's people walking their dogs and it's just um it's brilliant and it's brilliant for people watching because you've got you get expats there and you get um and you get nationals there and you get people from all over the world all doing these different things and i, I love stuff like that because you kind of like well you know what brings you here and why are you here and what are you doing and and what's your story so um yeah i love i love the botanic gardens if you can probably tell um, one of my other favourite places is um, Fort Canning Park. So that first picture was taken in Fort Canning. Um, uh, it's just super beautiful and really, really understated. I don't know anybody from my friends that has been to Fort Canning on holiday. Um, same for the Botanic Gardens, actually. I know so many people. I was going to put back Botanic Gardens on the, uh, the kind of touristy stuff to do. And then I talked to a lot of friends who have been here on holiday and they, and they were like, oh no, I, we never went to the Botanic Gardens. So I put that back onto the off the beaten track. So uh, Fort Canning is also off the beaten track. It was um, a hugely uh, instrumental place during World War II. So it's really interesting and historic. Um, it's, got, um, it's got a hotel and um, some really beautiful areas to walk around. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a nice kind of touristy, a uh, non-touristy place to go rather um and uh, yeah every time we've been even at the weekends it's it's not been really really busy um one of my big things is that i don't like going i never have it's, this has nothing to do with covid and crowds it's just i don't like being where everybody else is i like being going off and discovering something that's a bit new um so so that's that's that um 
I am a massive lover of nature and being outside and um, and hiking. So there's um, there's masses of hiking trails in Singapore. Um, they've been really really um, conscientious about making sure that there's a lot of green space, as I said. So um, you can hike around all the reservoirs. I think there's four. Um, they've got uh, this really awesome um, raised sort of elevated ridge walk that go they're called the southern ridges um, and you can walk all the way down to the southern most point of Singapore um, they've got uh, I'm just trying to think these these are most of these are reservoirs um, the top right picture I really liked it's taken from the southern ridges and I really like it because it really illustrates how much green there is and then suddenly there's these like skyscrapers in the in the background um, there are what else Islands. I love an island. Um, I one of the best things about COVID is that it's really made me discover what I've got around around me. Um, I had no idea how many islands there were in Singapore um, until I was really scratching the barrel to try and find scraping the barrel rather to trying to find things to, things that we could do while we were here. Um, I thoroughly confused Erica the other day by posting a picture of me um, on my Instagram at Coney Island and she was like, wait, what? Um, there is a Coney Island here in Singapore as well. It was originally modelled on the New York uh, version. It was uh, aspirational at best, I would say. It's now just a nature reserve, um, but it's really beautiful, um, good for biking and just walking around. And the beaches are spectacular. Um, the views beyond the beaches less so it's in quite an industrial area so the top right photo i don't know if you can see the cranes in the background but it's um not quite not quite as fun um and i've also been well on monday i was lucky enough a friend of mine is leaving so she hired a boat and we went over to um, an island called lazarus island um and then a, about a month ago i also went to pulau ubin pulau means island um and we went to Pilar Uben and rode bikes around with some friends and it's just a five minute boat ride but oh my goodness it was just I'll get on to the travel restrictions that we are under in Singapore but it's we, we can't leave so um it was just amazing to, for my mindset just to get on a boat and to and to leave and it felt like we were on a mini holiday it was lovely um I love going down and hanging out by the Keys um so the Keys are, this, it's a sort of riverfront that used to be very industrial and trade um, oriented. They've redeveloped it as I know many cities have. Um, and so now there's loads of restaurants and bars and you can just kind of go for a walk along the river and it's, um, it's a really nice place to be, loads and loads of stuff to do and it's very central. So we actually stayed down there um, when we came, oh, we came over here in May, in May or June to have a look around and we stayed down there because it was so it was so fun and we love going um and that's my crazy family down in the bottom left um historic buildings there's just there's so much to see um these are just the shop houses um and <clears throat> excuse me uh there's loads of places that you can look at shop houses so the shop houses are, are re actually really historic buildings um and so you used to have a sort of a shop downstairs it might be a might have been a tailor or um, the restaurant and then you'd have the family living upstairs um, in usually very cramped conditions um, there's uh, I think there's three or four different types of shop house which I haven't I can't identify which ones are which but they've um, many of them have now been restored um, and they're just gorgeous they're everywhere um, and so super colorful a lot of them have got like Peranakan tiles um, which are really typical here as well kind of on their um, on the uh, what's the word on the post post uh, pillars outside the houses um, I just love I love all the shutters and just how colorful they are and um, I love walking around those areas and again they're just not things that people do or really seek out when they come uh, on the trip here um, there's temples for everything um, as I mentioned before like we celebrate all different types of um, religious holidays here and that's very much represented as well in the uh, number of temples that are here. We've got Buddhist temples, Hindu temples, mosques, um, cathedrals, churches, uh, just really there's everything I, I would say and they're all absolutely incredible to look at 
um, really, really enjoyed just walking around doing, there was always like walking tours that you can find either just on the internet or actually if you go to these areas, a lot of the time the government has now set out a walking tour that you can do and you just scan a QR code and it tells you where to go and it tells you some of the information about, um, about what you're looking at, which is amazing. Um, it's all completely free. Um, so yeah, we love, love doing that and exploring those places. Um, and then there's even more and more and more and more stuff to, just to do. Um, these were, and I'm not, no word of a lie, this is the, all the museums that I could think of off the top of my head. And then I went and looked and there's like probably a hundred more. It's unbelievable. Um, I know I kind of keep saying this, but I love the fact that there's a Chinatown Heritage Centre, there's an Asian civilization. There's Malay, there's Singapore Chinese, there's Indian heritage. Like there's, all, there's something to learn about um, from all of these places and they're all really, really educational. Uh, the Art Science Museum I mentioned before, um, we're actually heading there this weekend. Um, they've got an enormous uh, exhibition on with Nat Geo about plastic. Um, so I know that the sustainable travellers among you uh, will, uh, will be as interested as I am in that, so I'll, be, I'll probably be posting stuff on my stories about that. Um, the National Museum is a really historic building, so it's actually really beautiful just to walk around, but it's also got loads of stuff about the war, about um, just how it was to live here even 50 years ago. Um, it's quite it's such a new nation, and I hadn't really appreciated that until we moved here. Um, in terms of just its sovereignty, um, but just how, how it was before is, is fascinating. And then all the political um, posturing that went on around, around who Singapore belonged to is um, just fascinating to, to find out. So um, there's loads of museums if you're into museums. If you like street art, which I do, I love street art. It's everywhere. It's literally, you, walk, you walk, just walk anywhere and there's stuff painted on all the walls. And it's just, you know, even a, like a back alley. We ended up in some back alley the other day and it was like, it was just the backs of two sh two lots of shops, and there was a street down the, down the middle. And it would normally not be the kind of nice place that you would want to walk down, and it would probably smell really bad. And um, and somebody had I think it's called the Gallum Ga Gallery, and they've painted all of the walls into this amazing street art. So it's just everywhere, and it, there's loads of different types. Um, the sort of little Chinese family uh, down on the bottom left. Um, this he's a really famous. Um, street artist and his paintings show up all over the city so, so and they're really really recognizable and you always know when you're when you're going to see him so I just love the color and the fact that they you know they're taking this to be a, a new you know, a new canvas I guess and that it's really welcomed in the city um, there's loads of attractions to um, that you can also go to so you uh, most people go to Universal but there's so much more to um, to Singapore and, and its attractions and just um, just Universal. So Universal's on Sentosa, which is another one of the islands. Um, it's, re it's right next to a water park called um, oh, Adventure Cove. Uh, there's, a, there's an aquarium there, there's a skydiving place, there's a zip line, um, there's loads and loads to do just on, on Sentosa. Um, we've also got a zoo um, and the zoo's split into three. So you can go to the zoo or you can go to night safari or you can go to um, uh, the river safari and all of them have different uh, animals that you can see. So it's all very different um, experience if you like zoos. Um, We've got a Madame Two Swords. We uh, were the first night uh, race for the Formula One. We host the uh, Rugby Sevens. Um, obviously, neither of those things have happened either this week, this year, um, for obvious reasons. Um, what else? Oh, I actually covered all of those without checking my notes. It's amazing. Um, we have a very famous airport called Changi, um, which has the highest, tallest, uh, indoor waterfall in the world it's a vortex um, and it's just incredible um, and this is this is the part that you can see but it actually goes down I think it's that's about five or six stories high and then it goes down um, into the basement as well it's absolutely unbelievable if you go at night then it changes color it's really really cool um, and you can just go and walk around there even if you're you don't even have to be in transit to be honest um, 
I, I could walk in there today and, and go and do that. And they've also got some really fun stuff like canopy walking and um, uh, they've got some incredible looking slide network that they, they've also got there, which we have uh, unfortunately not managed to do. I thought we would be spending a bit more time at Changi than we have. Um, the Singapore Flyer is in the bottom left. So that's one of these big sort of Ferris wheel type things, a little bit like the London Eye. And um, that's really great because um, they, I guess they do it on all of them now, but they've got the iPads in there. And so you can tap and scroll through things to see where you are and what you're looking at and really kind of orientate yourself in the city. Um, we did that quite early on and it was really, really useful. Um, so yeah, we really enjoy doing that. Um, there's a cable car that goes from uh, Mount Faber on the south of the island over to Sentosa, and that's really fun. Um, it's actually quite close to the Singapore Flyer. Um, they do river cruises, amphibious tours, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. So lots of different ways to see the, um, the city. Um, and then what else? There's, so, there's just so much to do. I, can't, I just can't keep talking about it. Um, there's loads of active stuff. You can go kayaking and you can go biking and you can go climbing. They do have some scuba diving here. Um, I think most of it they have to take you offshore quite a long way. Um, I'm a diver, but I haven't dived for many years. And I have to say I've been in the water in Singapore and I would not recommend um, submerging yourself for a long period of time in it. It's um, a huge port. Um, and so there's a lot of boats and tankers that come through. Um, and also there's a lot of rip currents. So they do take you offshore, but you can do dive trips from here. And if you can't, then uh, we'll get onto the travel, but you can also use Singapore to bounce off to other places. Um, I love food. I'm a massive foodie. Uh, there are no photos of food because I'm so much of a foodie that I forget to take the photos. And then I'm halfway through eating it before, <laughs> I've, uh, before I've remembered to take a picture. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a terrible foodie from that perspective, but I do like, I do like eating. Um, I love uh, checking out Michelin starred restaurants and they've got some really inexpensive ones here. Um, so that's always really exciting. Um, we even went to a restaurant that's in uh, one of the domes in Gardens by the Bay a few weeks ago. That was really fun. Um, the hawker food I've, to I've touched on um, and you can get everything from chili crab, which is um, delicious, but a lot of effort, I would say, for the uh, return. Uh, prata, which is also known as paratha in other countries, uh, which is kind of like a fried Indian flatbread. Um, it's absolutely delicious, really, really bad for you, but so good. Um, they serve that with like curry sauce. Um, char kway tiao, which is probably my favorite, and I had never heard of it before I moved here. Um, it's just, it's kind of Singapore's fried noodle dish. Really, really delicious. Um, they have lots of piranican food. Um, they have din tai fungs everywhere. And I know there's a big din tai fung following in the nomadic network. Uh, um, I hadn't realized how big it was internationally, but we, we love eating there. Um, and durian fruit, which I've got to mention because it's, um, it stinks. If anybody's been to Southeast Asia, it is the worst smell you'll ever, you'll ever smell. Um, you should try it once. I have, don't need to do it again. Um, and, and yeah. That's the food. And I'm gonna go super quickly through this because I just wanna make sure that we have enough time for questions. Um, lots of people are interested in what it's like to live here. Um, so uh, it's expensive. It's, it's uh, not a cheap place to live, um, but it's, we, we figured out that with the cost of living, we're still saving money because we, well, we would have been saving money because we spend so much money on airplane flights that we would be able to be so much closer and take advantage of the low cost airlines. Um, it has a very strict author authoritarian government and a very compliant um, population um, for how, whatever your views are on that. That's kind of how it is. Um, and I'll get on to that as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about COVID. Uh, very high standard of living for most people. Um, the uh, only kind of caveat I would say to that is possibly the domestic work, um, the manual labourers. Um, who all live in dormitories, and I will also touch on that. Um, the public uh, transport system is amazing. Um, it's got an enormous metro system called the MRT, um, and loads and loads of buses. It's really, really easy to get around, um, and you do not need a car. Um, the shopping is uh, fine, I would say. Uh, most things are more expensive than we're used to in the US and the UK, um, but it's 
pretty much everything you need is widely available here. Um, and expat life is sort of a really interesting dynamic um, for me here. Uh, it's, um, like I said, there's a really big expat community, community, so that's been really lovely to meet lots of new people. Um, but, you know, ultimately, when you are an expat and you live internationally, that, I mean, you fall into the routines. And so, um, like my life, really, it, it sounds all glamorous. And I've got some really nice photos of the stuff that we've been making ourselves do at the weekends. Um, because otherwise, you can really fall into just that day to day. We're making packed lunches for the children and doing this, doing the school run and getting into extracurricular activities and, oh, you know, just going to the same old restaurants because those are the ones you know and like when there's actually a lot more to explore. So um, that's kind of, that's that. Um, so travel before COVID, we, we traveled, I mean, we were only here for six months before um, we started locking down. Um, but we managed to go to uh, Indonesia. We went to an island in uh, Indonesia called Bintan, which is about an hour away from here on a ferry. Um, we went to Malaysia, so we went to Penang um, for a few days, uh, which is amazing. Just loved Penang. It was really, really cool. Um, we ended up, first time I've been back to the UK for Christmas in a, a long, long time. And obviously I decided that this should be the year, which was the year that we moved to Singapore and were as far away from the UK as we could have been. So that was a lovely trip. Um, and we also went to Japan, um, just as everything was really kicking off right at the end of January. Um, we went skiing and then to Tokyo. So loads of stuff that you can do from here. Um, there's so many other places that you can go. We had so many plans. Um, we're really close and easy to get to Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia and uh, Bhutan. I'll do a little shout out for Bhutan. Um, and Thailand and Indonesia, Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand, like there's so much you can do from here and it's so much cheaper and easier to do it because of um, the geographical proximity. Um, but obviously that has all been put on hold. Um, so lots of people ask me about COVID. I'll touch on it if you want to ask questions in the chat and let me know uh, if you're interested in anything else. Um, we were one of the first countries to get COVID imported here. Uh, first case was noted on the 23rd of January. Um, it was actually kept under control, excuse me, and kept under control really well um, for quite some time. Um, and the World Health Organization really commended Singapore for a long time about um, how they were handling the situation. Um, and then unfortunately it got into the worker dorms, um, which is, where it really um, escalated. So we've now, I think we've had something like 57,000 cases, which is a lot for um, quite a small country. Um, but a lot of uh, the, the context of that is that it was in the worker dorms and a lot of these um, living situations are very cramped um, and not particularly nice. Um, they've come under a lot of criticism for that internationally, I know. Um, and it's very, it would have spread very, very easily. Uh, so that had to be contained. Um, they've actually tested every single um, person who lives in a worker dorm now. Um, and I think they test them routinely. So that's another reason why our number, numbers are so high, because they would have picked up an awful lot of asymptomatic people um, who wouldn't have been tested elsewhere in the world. Uh, but they really want, they're very, very aggressive on um, contact tracing, making sure that everybody who has it or has had it um, is, is identified. Um, if you have become, if you've come in contact with it, then you are put on a stay at home notice for two weeks. You're not allowed to leave your house um, and they do check. Um, and there are very, very strict penalties, including deportation if you break the rules. So it's, uh, there's a high incentivization to follow the rules, I guess. Um, our borders have been closed since, uh, I'm gonna get this wrong, the 23rd of March. Uh, we banned all short-term visitors coming in and out. Um, there's, still no, there's still no tourist uh, visas being issued. Uh, some residents are being allowed in and out, um, but you still do have to do two weeks of quarantine at a cost of 2,000 Singapore dollars per person in a hotel of the government's choosing. So um, we, <clears throat> as it stands, um, I have no desire to spend 8,000 Singapore dollars to sit in a room with my two children for two weeks. So. We stay where we are and, uh, and that'll be, I guess, us until, until things can change. Um, our situation 
is incredibly good at the moment. Um, we're into single digit cases per day. Um, and m I would say 95% of those cases have been identified uh, as part of clusters um, or were already self-isolating or were imported. So um, we're all very, very hopeful. And there have been rumours for about two months that we're going to get some good news soon. So cross everybody cross your fingers that we do get some good news. And that is me. I've literally just talked at you for um, 40 minutes. So um, would love to know if you guys have got any questions. Um, I've been seeing the little red box going flash, flash, flash um, up in the corner there uh, with questions, uh, ho I hope, and comments. And I hope people have been having a lovely time chatting. Um, Leah told me to leave this up for a little while just so you've got some places to find me. Um, I'm probably, oh, I put Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, I'm on Facebook. <laughs> Um, but maybe we could start a new thing. Um, I'm probably most active on Instagram, I would say, um, but please do head over to the blog um, uh, or Instagram to check me out. I'm terrible on Twitter, so if I don't respond to you there, then uh, I probably will in about six months. And that's me. I have your contact info as well, Emma. I'm going to drop it in the chat. Um, thank you for that. That was so awesome. I didn't, I guess I didn't expect it to be, ooh. I didn't expect much. I knew it was a great place and there people stop over there all the time, but I guess I was surprised at the amount of activities and things there are to do. This is why we need a local to come in and tell us about these things. <laughs> so I just dropped in the chat, everyone, about how you can connect with Emma and I have a couple great questions for you so we can get started. Okay, can um, I stop doing my screen see. so I can see people's faces? Oh, I'm sorry? Can I stop sharing my screen so I can see everybody? Yeah, I think we've given enough time and I also dropped that in the chat, so. Okay, perfect. Oh, I've lost my mouse. There we go. Oh, hello everyone. Cool, I know I like seeing people's faces as well. Yeah, so much nicer. <laughs> okay, so, yes, it is. And it feels like a real conversation, you know. That was a wonderful presentation though. Um, Quick question, did you take all the photos yourself? Yes, those, those, are all, those are all my photos. Oh, I think we're losing Leah. Great, especially the three art ones. They're beautiful. Hello. I'm back. You're back. Okay, good. Can you hear me? See me? You're glitching quite a bit. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I know. I apologize. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're back. Okay, perfect. So Linda wants to know, well, Kim actually, she wants, Kim wants to know, is the hawker market only food or does it have other goods? And then to piggyback off that, Linda wants to know what happened to these hawker markets during the pandemic. Um, so the hawker markets are basically just food. Um, they are quite often situated right next to a wet market, which is kind of like a food market where you can go and buy um, pretty much everything you need. I don't actually live near any of them, so I just go to a regular supermarket. But um, so yeah, that's where they are. But the hawker markets are just food. Um, and then, uh, so what happened to them during lockdown? So we locked down on. Um, the 7th of April for around seven weeks um, and everything was closed. It was really, really difficult for, um, for all of them, to be honest. Um, and most of them, I think, are still okay. There's a couple of centres which I know have really, really suffered, particularly in the um, central business district because uh, most of the offices still are not open. Um, or in fact, I think they're starting to open as of this week. So they've really, really suffered um, even after Circuit Breaker uh, finished on the 1st of June. Uh, we went then from Circuit Breaker, we went into phase one, which really didn't allow us to do anything apart from send the kids to school. And then uh, phase two, we've been allowed to do a lot more um, and they're kind of very slowly reducing the restrictions. Um, but a lot of people don't want to go to the office. I mean, they figured out that they can work pretty well from home um, and so why would they go to the office M mask wearing is mandatory here um, and it doesn't matter if you're sat in an office by yourself you still are required to be wearing a mask for the entire day and that's tiring um, so i think a lot of people are kind of thinking well i don't really want to do it anyway so um, 
yeah I, right. I, I feel I feel really bad for, for those guys a lot of them did some stuff uh, like you can do grab the grab is like our uber um, and you can do like grab food or um, food panda and mm -hmm. stuff like that so a lot of them will deliver um, but it's, it's just not the same right um, well are they doing outdoor seating though Sorry, I can do, you, have, you, have, you can do uh, outdoor seating. It's all socially distant, uh -huh. so like every other chair you can sit on. Right. Um, but it's just a uh, that part of it's not not so bad. And some of the more popular markets have definitely um, picked up um, quite quickly. In fact, we went we went out for dinner a while ago, and I was a little bit overwhelmed by just how many people were there, um, and the social distancing was a bit harder then. Um, but yeah, just, just these ones in downtown, I think it, it's it's really hit them hard. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know a lot of um, food stalls or even restaurants in the U.S. have just turned into food truck operations. They're like, well, we're just going to take our, our operation on the go uh, to service more people and hopefully get out in the open where people can, you know, get fresh air, be six feet apart, et cetera. So that's so sad. Well, hopefully yeah. they'll recover. Um, quickly. Uh, I know you had said you only spent six months prior to being locked down with COVID in Singapore, so you're still relatively new or like a year there, but did you leave at all in that six months to go travel? Like other, yeah, so other nearby we, countries? Yes, so that was when we went to um, Indonesia and Malaysia and Japan. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Short flights, right? Or no, I know you said you took some boats correct uh, so we took a boat to Indonesia that was about an hour um, and then we took a boat to a uh, plane we flew to Malaysia to Penang um, and that was I guess about an hour and then we actually flew to Japan and that's not close that's like seven and a half hours oh wow that's pretty far <laughs> <laughs> right well I'm glad you got some traveling done before you know it's not so easy to do that um, so far, um, sorry, it's not, it's not, it hasn't been easy to do that lately. Um, let's see, Ali, Ali, sorry, Ali, Ali, if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, is it possible to get to Singapore via train or bus from nearby countries such as Malaysia and Thailand? Uh, you can get the bus over the um, bridge from uh, Malaysia, but you can't, there's no train. Sorry, Emma, repeat that. Um, so you can get the bus, but there's no train. Oh, okay, no train. Yeah, so you can right, come and in. it's pretty easy to find information on. Yeah, it's super easy. How to like, take it, the bus. The bus. It's almost like just a public transport bus, so you can. Um, oh, great. Like it just like catching. You know, you, I would catch a bus from my house to Orchard Road. I can catch. I can go to. Malaysia, but just by catching a regular bus, it's quite weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so um, Danai, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. If this applies to you, could you talk a little bit about how you found accommodation in Singapore, specifically rental, and what are typical requirements to rent? Um, what a, would, it, would a fair cost be? What were some of the challenges when you were trying to find a place to live? That's a really difficult question, actually. Um, it's, so we rent. Um, if you want to buy a house in Singapore, it's like squillions of dollars. It's insane how expensive things are. Um, we had always said that if we had to pay for rentals and we had the cash that we would buy a house. So um, we just prefer to use the rental income or rental payments as mortgage repayments instead. And uh, we saw how expensive it was to rent here. So we were like, oh, well maybe we'll look at buying. And we looked for like maybe 60 seconds and then had to stop because it's just so expensive. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really is only the Asian thing. Um, so uh, we were very lucky. So the company that my husband is with, um, they have a relocation package. So they gave us a realtor and he took us around. Pretty sure he hated me because I was I made him look at like 47 properties before I found this one. Um, so yeah, we it it is expensive. It's really expensive. Um, it depends. It's kind of depends what you're looking for. And we could have found stuff for a lot cheaper than this, but we wanted somewhere. And you know, I'm very glad that we actually chose somewhere that was a bit bigger. Um, we, we're in a house, 
Mm -hmm. uh, not, not in a condo. Most people live in condos, uh, which is much cheaper. And then you have a gym on site and a swimming pool. Um, but with my kids, I was really glad that we had some outdoor space while we were locked down because we literally, there was a point where during the worst part of the circuit breaker, only one adult from the household could leave the house at any one time. So the kids stayed home. Oh, wow. Um, you, I think you could go out, you could go out for an hour to exercise and that was it. So it was really, really strange. Right. Well, actually, um, nice to have some outdoor space. Oh, I, yeah, I bet. Um, but you said, you know, like you said, the culture is more about the community. So there probably weren't protests about having to stay inside and whatnot. Um, anyways, and that's a whole different topic. <laughs> so um, that's a great segue into Dana's question. If you can't leave your house, how do you get food? Like, are there delivery services? Um, you know, are grocery stores themselves? Like, do they build? Sorry, you went on to mute there. Oh, sorry, did you catch what I said? <laughs> I, ca I caught most of it. Um, so when we when we couldn't leave, it, I mean, it did get a bit hairy um, because we couldn't, the, there is a delivery service, but then it got very um, booked up. So you couldn't get a delivery slot and stuff. Um, so we were, we were still allowed, the grocery stores were still open. So we were allowed to go out and go shopping. Um, but, you know, you couldn't then meet a friend for a coffee afterwards or before because nothing was nothing was open um, right certain things like it was really difficult my daughter had her birthday and we i really struggled even to find her birthday present because none of those stores were open um but, you know that's her first world problem um so but yeah there was loads of deliveries um we actually ended up making it a thing that we would get um we wanted to support local businesses so um, and restaurants, so once they were up and running with deliveries, some of them were um, already, um, but a lot of them didn't do island-wide deliveries. And they quickly realised that that was something that they needed to offer if they wanted to stay afloat. So we would get a takeout lunch a couple of times a week with the kids. Um, and then every Saturday night, we would have our like, date night and get a delivery from a different, um, from a different restaurant. So that was quite fun. Um, so yeah, we, we, could, we could still leave. It just was very restricted so right right okay that's good that there were options then um dana also has a question of how similar or different are the is the universal to the ones in florida and california i've never been to either universal in florida or california i have been to both the disney worlds um i would say it is definitely on the smaller side um I'm not a massive theme park person. My kids love it. So we go, we do quite, go quite often and I'm a bit over it now. But in fact, we're going next week because they're on an October <laughs> break. Um, oh. So, <laughs> so yeah, they, I mean, I, well, I get motion sick, so I can't go on half the rides because they don't work for me. So I just, I just sit at the bottom and take Instagram photos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my fans have come out. So yeah, I, I, my my feeling is it's quite a small park. Um, they've managed to pack a lot into it, um, and also it's, I think it's quite it's kind of dated. Like you don't get a lot of the newer things. So there's no Harry Potter stuff at our Universal, but um, my kids are only just getting. Oh. Into it. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll have to um, have to get there and. Compare it, I guess. I've never been to the one in Florida, but I live near the one in LA, so it's pretty easy. Um, well, anyways, this was fantastic, Emma. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with everyone. Um, everyone else, if we didn't get to your question or you had additional questions, you can go ahead and connect with Emma. Uh, chat there. And once again, thank you for sharing your knowledge and taking the time out today. I know it's the beginning of the day in Singapore right now, so um, you're getting started, but uh, hopefully you liked waking up this morning. So I can just do a little, little outro for everyone. Let's see, share screen, there we go. So, Everyone, you were just at a Nomadic Network a event. Today, Emma was presenting on the Insider's Guide to Singapore. You'll see that we have two to three events every single week. Our upcoming events are here at the top. We have one tomorrow and also on Thursday. 
visiting Italy, visiting India. Next week, world's quirkiest diving destinations. Tell all your diver friends. That'll be super cool. That's with um, Alex, Alex in Wonderland. She's probably like the third travel blogger I've ever followed. Um, next week, we also have how to start and maintain a journal practice while traveling. I think that's always great to keep yourself grounded. And then discovering Portugal, which is one of my top destinations. So I'm excited to host that as well. And like I mentioned at the beginning, if you feel that we've brought value to you, we have this Patreon community where you can receive all these exclusive, awesome uh, perks right here listed. You know, live Q&As with Matt are my favorite ones, free signed books, free guides, never before seen photos, input and um, recommendations on the content that we put out, or you can check out our PayPal and contribute to the cause. So go ahead, put up your phone, scan these, and you'll get more information on each of these links here. So once again, we love seeing you guys here a few times a week. Emma, you were wonderful. And I hope that people are just coming to you as their local Singapore guide moving forward. Uh, thank you for being part of this awesome travel community. I know Nomadic Network has served me in ways I never thought imaginable. So, you know, hopefully you guys are getting, you know, getting fulfilled um, of your wanderlust through our events. And we will see you next time, everyone. Thanks again, Emma. Thank you.